So is Steve not working then? When is he ever? All he does is spend his time worrying about that flaming car. That motor's a money pit. Don't tell me about it. But it's Tyrone I feel sorry for. Steve's over at the garage every five minutes, neither in the poor man. Talk about midlife crisis. Well, at least he's not my problem anymore. God knows I've got enough of me all. Call us a princess. Don't call me princess. Don't call anyone princess except me. You're my queen. There's a big difference. Mm. <laughs> OK, then. Come on, you can help me change a barrel. Your wish is my command, Your Majesty. <laughs> Pair of knocking me sick and all. No, don't be grudging. You and I both know. Soon wears off does all that. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. We've got all these suppliers chasing me for money, you know, for the stuff I ordered for Tracy's wedding. We'll make a pay on then. It wasn't your fault. You just did what you were asked. Honestly, the bills are down to her. Yeah, I know that. But this is Tracy Barlow we're talking about, isn't it? What do you think she's going to do? Smile sweetly and ask you to make the checks out to her? Mother was once struck by a bolt that had fallen off the undercarriage of a passing helicopter. I mean, she could have been killed. That's what the solicitor said at the hearing, but fortunately, it was a very small bolt. Plus, we were at Blackpool Beach, and she'd just been swimming, so she'd wrapped her hair in a towel, and that cushioned the blow. <laughs> and, uh, was she OK? Well, she had trouble remembering some months of the year after that, and she developed an irrational fear of the colour yellow, so that was it for custard in our household. And she called me Daphne occasionally, which was odd, because she didn't know any Daphnes. But elsewhere, she was fine. <laughs> you know, I, I've got an app here for head injuries. Where'd you get that? Uh, Tracy Barlow's shop. And he paid good money for it, uh, if you don't mind. Is that Rob's? Uh, uh, ah, Carla. Are you selling Rob's stuff? Yeah, the stuff that's worth out. The rest has gone to the charity it's shop. It's not yours to sell. Who's going to stop me? OK, I think we both need to calm down. Calm talk. down, Ken. And this heartless little bitch. Is... OK. All right. How much you want for it? For what? For all of it. Come on, tot it up. I'll write you a cheque. I bought him them cufflinks for his 16th birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you speak up? Because I can't hear you for the sound of the violins. Look, I'm sure Tracy will make allowances under the circumstances and offer you a reasonable price. No, nope. she can forget that. This stuff's not for sale. Not for her, anyway. You are? Tracy, for goodness sake. Anybody else can buy it, but not her. You vindictive love. You are the reason Rob's in prison. I would rather burn this place down, love, than let you have his stuff. Please. Five. Whoa, 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 whoa. You get your hands off me. Look, just calm down, OK? Now, you should leave before I call the police. You know what? You should call the police. You should call the police. Tell them that this money-grabbing little cow is selling my brother's stuff. Oh, do one, you nutter. You've not heard the last of this, Tracy. Yadda, yadda, yadda. Go and drink another bottle of wine, eh? <laughs> <laughs>